Okay. I think uh, he is facing the uh, problem, maybe. Halo, Assalamualaikum Pak Bambang. There is technical problem, maybe. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think that we can move to uh, our main program. Uh, directly from Professor Landscape Architecture, Dr. Ismail uh, bin Said. So I will please him to uh, deliver his lecture uh, entitled Interpreting SDG 11 in Landscape Architectural Studio on Community Park Planning and Urban Farming. So please, Professor, to deliver your lecture today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Pak Edwin. Thank you, Jim. Dr. Rahayu from Ikira. From Ikira. Uh, I'm much delighted uh, to share the knowledge uh, from my students who has done a studio program last semester with two of other colleagues of mine in the studio called Lenske Architectural Studio on Park Training and Urban Farming. So uh, this lecture is a telling question in which that uh, I like to impart on the importance of park planning and urban farming, in which that landscape architects able to bring it at a more distant, further distance from other disciplines, disciplines related to architecture and urban planning. So we're going to spend all on park planning and urban farming. Okay, this, is, this picture that I showed is one of the sites on which that is happened in my city, Johor Bahru. Johor Bahru is the most southern city in Peninsula Malaysia next to Singapore, for which that uh, we look at the expansion of city at a very fast rate. And therefore, urban parks, urban spaces, alone alone are a major concern in the city needs development. Therefore, I agree from with two other colleagues of mine, Dr. Lee Yo Lai and uh, Suradia and me, we combined efforts to teach 36 students in the studio of last semester. And... No. Okay. okay, okay. Uh, for Yora, Yora Mutiara, please turn off your okay. microphone. So, okay. therefore, uh, we like. We like to share this uh, experience of 36 students. Out of 36, uh, four of them are Indonesian students, one in Jakarta, one in Malang, one in Aceh, the other one is in Surabaya. All right. So now let uh, me share this project. So, therefore, the title is How Do We Interpret SDG 11 into Our Studio? Uh, I'd like first to bring you to the whiteboard. Okay. Can you all see my whiteboard here? Yes, okay. from yeah. So the SDG eleven is about sustainable city and community. Uh, why does cities is of a big concern in Southeast Asia, in Asian nation? The reason is simply because we are expanding fast. In Malaysia, more than 71% of the population of Malaysians are living in cities. Out of that, 38% of them are children. Therefore, as a landscape architect, in uh, in relative to architecture, engineering, and urban planner, urban designer, right? We like to look at how can we develop the city in which that it gives what well-being, safety, and sustainable and inclusive, inclusive of these people into the city landscape, right? So therefore, we design. Uh, with two of other colleagues of mine, we designed 
uh, a program for which the children will see real projects, real sites in Baru. Although we are of uh, online system, but we find a way to, to show, show it to the students so the students can feel that they are doing a real project. All right. So now I'd like to turn back to our slide. <clears throat> All right. So with me, uh, I have uh, my PhD student, Rohana, is assisting me in doing, in delivering this presentation. Next. <clears throat> so therefore, organization is a big matter to us in a certain sector. We, our task, our scope of thinking, our teaching of the sector points to urbanism. Why is that? Because of the rapid development. Uh, we see that by 2035, Indonesia will be a country that will have many more urban cities, right? For which that it will become one of the big uh, developing nations in the world. Perhaps in 2050, as projected by United Nations, it will be the number four in the world. Therefore, I think we who are the people that have this idea of how to make a city livable and sustainable for the people, we need to think about this thing. All right. So therefore, as we do it, there are this train of resources. Land is expensive. Open spaces are getting less. People build buildings and roads and bridges. So less open spaces, right? And then air pollution come in. And climate change is getting uh, things that is of big concern now, right? So why not we look at community parks, green spaces, or we set to be a place for people to socialize, for children to play, for people to do recreational activities. So this is the thing that we, we teach our children in the studio. Okay, next. <clears throat> All right. Before we go in further, uh, I'd like to read the sentence here, the number two. It involves investment in public transport, creating green public spaces. So here in SDG 11, we as architect, we are the ones who stand tall, stand above the crowd, or making cities and human settlement inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. So today, let's focus on just one matter, green public spaces. Right, so these spaces by 2030 and hence inclusive and sustainable urbanization and capacity for participatory. So, we like that when people come to the public space that we design, they participate in the maintenance and the building of the public space. In this case, we go for urban farming, right. So pretty we got the Indonesia ada ada bagian panggil uh, Indonesia berkebun ya yeah? next <clears throat> alright before I go further I like to show one uh, example of a research done by my PhD student on why does green spaces is a big matter in urban population or urban dwelling right so this is a town one of the early town established by British in Peninsula Malaysia. British colonized Malaysia long, 156 years. I think, of course, Indonesia colonized, uh, the Dutch colonized Indonesia for 384 years, that's long, right? But one thing that British did when they colonized and built cities, one of the big matters they talked about is the alum alum, the green spaces. Yeah, lahan that is greenery, right? So I like to show this one city called Taiping. It's a small city, but it become very a favorite city to nowadays for the past twenty years, whereby retirees come to this place because of what? Because of the green infrastructure, the greenery, the park, the quality of air, clean air, good neighborhood. So. Let me illustrate using this. In the beginning, if you look at the left, whereby if you come up from your house, you go into your garden, you find trees of mangoes and rambutan and tulakan. And then when you move 
into the playground instead of field, whereby you can play football with your children or your grandchildren just like me, right? Then as you move into the town, the town along the street, there are trees, shaped trees, for which they lower the temperature of the, of the thermal comfort of the town. Then as you proceed to the big open space called Lake Garden here, this is named from, by the British, Lake Garden, right? We have large area whereby we have lakes, animals, cupids, cradles, and so forth, right? So, and then we go to the up here, to the hill, so a lot of hills, all right? So all of this will turn the, the city, the, the town piping become a place whereby people feel comfort, people feel safe inside you, okay? Let me give a little bit of a theory on this. This is go to the second slide. This is one of the findings of this city. Okay. For a city found by Dr. Madrina that for it to be an inclusive and space that points to the well-being, the greenery should have at least three properties. Three properties. One, naturalness. I will bring it later on, explain further on this two section towards the end of this lecture. Two, diversity of animals and green species, plant species, right? Not only shade trees, but fruit trees, not only shrubs, but water plants. And then when you walk from your house garden to the open spaces to the park, you see that is a coherence of plant species, greenery, that tie up the whole of the town site into one place. So therefore, when you ask the people of Taiping, Taiping is a Chinese name, Taiping means peacefulness, Taiping means that what is your town? You don't say that it's my town, it's my home. Yes. So the, 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 the greenness of the city of Taiping points to that people feel that it's my home, it's not just my house, it's my place, it's not just my space. Right. From this theoretical framework, I like now to show the project that is done by my children. Next. All right. First of all, uh, one of the parameters that we teach our students in this class that. We are going to go for target 11.7. Under the SDG 11, there are many, right? So one of it is 11.7. What is it? Allow the urban citizens, urban dwellers, to accept safe, inclusive, and accessible, green and public spaces. This is where the estate artists come into the road, right? Green and public system. Design it for which that people can access easily and then it's safe. This accessibility is to apply many cities in Malaysia and also in Singapore for which that they will they have developed another system called park connectors for which that they connect one park, one park, one green public space to another. One another one alone to another by part connection. I will show one also. I show you you all one slide later on. Okay. Now, but this public space must be it's built. It's a built uh, space. It's not natural, right? It's built, my man, right? But a public space that will be used by all users from all sex, all age, all person with disability. So we, we want to see that there's no uh, separation between uh, ethnic or between age or between male and female. If we go, it we go for shared property, right? Next. Okay. So therefore, we ask this question when we design this program. How does the architect Expected to them contribute to achieve sustainable development goals. Because uh, in many of the companies now, 
uh, also municipality, they are always concerned of this SDG level. All right. So therefore, we were looking at two criteria. One we call urban farming. The other we call urban park. Right. So now we're going to merge this into one site in Juhobaru. I'm going to show the site later on. It is a river. We call it Sungai Buntan. Sungai Buntan, right? But in order for our students to get graduated, we call invited speakers who have designed urban farm in city, such as in Sungai Putri, such as in Petaling Jaya, and in Kuala Lumpur, and also in Singapore, right? So these are the examples of lectures that we give. We invite their experts, landscape architects, urban designers to give lecture to our students, about four of them, right? And then next. <clears throat> okay. Example here, this is where uh, uh, in Iskandar Putri. Iskandar Putri is a new city uh, built, started in 2006, 15 years ago. It's a city next to Jubobaru in Joho, right? Next to my city now, but it's a modern city. Therefore, they started with it. One of the things that the concern is to have this green status more than 10% as a time by the urban planning. We want it as much as what has happened in Sokajaya, which is 38%. That's big amount of greenery, right? So therefore, they planned it. One of it is that they introduced park connectors. Meaning that when you cycle and when you walk along a street, street, you go to another park. Then you walk again, cycle along three street, street. That's the park connector. Then you go to a padang, or you go to alun alun. Then you go back to your home garden. Right? Okay, next. So therefore, to construct this, we segment our studio into four segments. First, it's about promotion of SDG. Tell what is SDG purpose of SDG, right? Lecture, as I said just now, right? Then we go to a site. We go to municipality of Rukobaru. Uh, we went to see the last architect uh, from the commission of the Wali Kota that uh, we like to have a site, a real site, for which that we can turn uh, a project the project become uh, our student laboratory. Right. So we got it. Okay. But before that, we must teach students what are the vocabulary that link to this SDG level, which is about making cities a human settlement. So there are many vocabulary. I'm going to show you later on. Right. Then the next stage is when you design it, we look at the project, it's a river park project. How does it link to other open spaces in the city of Jovan? Then in the final stage, we allow our students to design it. Then, but then how they we also impart of on them how do we want to make this sustainable? Okay, so they have to design programs for which that urban dwellers, urban citizens able to come and participate into the uh, part that they design. Okay, next. So uh, these are the stage. Okay, from stage one, which is just understanding vocabulary, then we go synthesis ideas, then conceptual ideas. We met it when we went to the site, then we put into the idea into master plan, then we can everything. Okay, all right. So but here, uh, one of the umbrella, the big picture, we go for this. Promotive part design involves people. It requires space. It designs a space that fulfills the people's function, that, but, and it fits to the environment, to a sustainable environment. So we have four words here people, space, function, environment. So all this must be thought consecutively, must be thought at once, right? You cannot separate them. When we uh, when we teach our students, so that students think this at one time: people, space, function, environment. Okay. 
So you see that uh, when we design it, a lot of them we store this layer by layer. There are four layers. The final is the master plan. And inside the master plan, there are different areas. I'm going to show that. Hmm. In the SVG 11, <coughs> uh, as completed by the technician, there are these indicators. How you want to, uh, how do you want to reach SVG 11? We look at three indicators. One is environment and health. Yeah, when we design parks, when we design garden, we look at how does it contribute well-being of the citizen, right? Of the urban dwellers, resident. Then how does it generate economy? Then how does it become a place for people to play and socialize? So these indicators on the left column, yeah, environment and health, economy, and society are the main uh, are the main pillars. But under that, and the environment alone, there are many attributes. There are 11 here. So, example here, ecological benefits that I highlighted in red, park connectors. But one thing that I'm going to emphasize on is farming, number five, and number six, natural learning processes. That I will illustrate in a section later on. Right? Okay. On the economy, we talk about our food supply, then also park amenities. Right? And the sociality, we talk about how people, when they visit the park, how they are connected. It, does it lead to social cohesion? Okay. And when the park is changed, not only just trees, but fruit trees, it becomes a dishon, a kebun, right? Kebun buah buahan or church. How can it be a place that children can play in? So we can't children play now. So these are the things that we deliver to the students, give the input to them before they execute the project. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, vocabulary is important in teaching students. Therefore, there are many vocabularies. Out of 36, we put we have 36 students. Each student has their own vocabulary. So we go and find from the literature, especially from general, what are the vocabulary related to community park and urban farming? For example, here, this is one example, uh, assignment by one of, my, of our students. Uh, she or she is looking at urban farming. So she, it takes her three weeks to find on her own what is the definition of urban farming that relates to Hudson University and community. All right? Uh, this is why, this is one thing that students have to do on their own. This is in the university. Uh -huh. and then, another student do it differently. She look at it into a Venn diagram whereby the center is at the 11. But there are three main factors as mentioned in the at 11 by information. Environment, social, economy. Right. Under the social, it promotes personal well-being. Example, right? Under the environment, it will add biodiversity. Under economic, it provides supply, fresh supply, fruit, fresh and vegetables. And this is why, this is one of the things about Indonesia vegetables, right? For which that Indonesia vegetables, there are 30 cities in Indonesia, including uh, Palembang, Bana Aceh, Jakarta, Makassar, right? And nine in this type that, uh, that join that program in Indonesia vegetables. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and then another apart from both of we look at this about sociality. So socialization of residents urban scenery. So this is one word cap for which that students have to find out on their own. But they synthesize it into this this one diagram. And we want that so that students are able to understand it well. Can you unlock that one? Okay. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not. Uh, never mind. So yeah, so so therefore we see that we have urban farming that we have socialization, but actually in total there are 36 vocabulary. All right. All right. Next. <coughs> All right. And then this new vocabulary here about six streets. Uh, this is where whereby you have to go to search from the history group and library and look at what is meant by street street street. 
for which they have looked at uh, where it's been planted along the street, along boulevard. What is the form? Okay. How can three feet, three uh, trees along the street become an urban orchard? Uh, these are the things that uh, students should find here. Okay, next. <clears throat> All right. So welcome to the project. So this project is at the city of Jobaru. So with the permission from Walikota of Jobaru, the landscape architect bring my students, eight of them, uh, our 36 only eight are living near the city. So therefore we bring them, we bring zone together with them so that they go for inventory of the site, right? So when you go there, the site is about six meters long, more than half a kilometer. A small river, a stream, right? Uh, but then uh, we also look at one thing. Uh, when we look at it, we look at World Economic Forum Cinematic View. Under this view, this is we get it from United Nations. For which that uh, we look at climate change, right? We look at economic health and well-being, that right? human health. Ecological well health is one thing. How does ecological health will lead to human health and well being? Then, when we have to design it, we include community farming and fertility, which is uh, also called connectivity. Next, <clears throat> here is the site. That is the city of uh, Jawabaru. City Jawabaru is more than 616,000 people. Right, and this is a reserve, a uh, river reserve, for which that Sungai Buntan lies in the middle. Right, so Sungai Buntan is uh, serving many communities, urban communities, right, including also on the right hand side is where the factory is. Right, uh, these are the fabrics, yeah, of, of making buses. Right. So therefore, this greenery is a linear greenery. So we fly a drone, we the student fly a drone and measure the element, resources of the place. Okay, so eight students. Therefore, then we divide the student into seven groups. So each of them, uh, there are about seven students. No, there are about uh, six students, right, to separate. So each will come with their own master plan. Okay, let us see one on master plan. Okay, before going further, we also advise our students uh, from the architect from the municipality of Jobaro showed that uh, Sungai Mutan is greenery, but we have to link with other communities. Through what? Through park connection. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, here is one example. I'm going to choose just one example out of seven, right? So along this, uh, this is the master plan, right? So if you start from the left, it's a main street, the entrance. There are two entrances, left and the right, the east and the west, okay? So from the east, uh, from the west, or from the west, uh, from the west, right? So as you go, you enter. So you enter, that is number one. Urban farming, barbecue area, Farm to table area. Next, number two is fishing area. Number three, butterfly garden. When butterfly garden, therefore, we need to have flowers, yellow flowers, yeah, or pink flowers, or which they bloom in the morning and butterfly collect nectar from it. So therefore, we need to teach our students uh, what is ecology and what is plant material in the in the classroom. Relate some of the plant material classes knowledge that you get from other professors and bring into this studio. Okay. And then at the lake, we call water reception point, we have this water theater. Then this group, uh, when it's still park, it's not just trees, it's also about culture, art. Right? You see that? And you see, uh, yeah, art, number six, and number seven, art, right? Okay. As you go to the south, we have dense character of uh, trees, many big trees at the south. That is the number nine. number nine. We have living trails. We have outdoor classroom for children. We have scenic area. Then we have parking. 
So these are the unpacking our amenities, right? Uh, toilet our amenities, uh, wildlife, what power our amenities, that we need to teach our children about this, especially in the construction detail. Okay? So this becomes an inclusive part for people all ages, all tribes, all races, all ethnic. Any capsule are, are, are considered, right? So therefore, we teach our students that we can fulfill the target of SPC 11. Okay, guys? So now let me go further on. <coughs> ah, okay. So therefore, in order to make the program successful, okay, our students go and meet the landscape architect of the uh, municipality, uh, Kota Nwabalu, and so what are the programs that the people can join, can join together to make this part as their place, as their part. So they need to participate. So we have this program from January until December. Example here, we have gardening workshop in January, then open kitchen, whereby in the open farming, they can have this open kitchen, right? Right? And then they can have family day, they can have farmer market. So all these are must be programmed. We have to teach our students. My students are in the fourth semester. Sorry, in the third semester. Sorry, in the third semester. They are in the third semester, yeah. But they are really, really push themselves uh, to reach the limit of a good design. Okay? okay. Uh, here come where the, whereby they have this section. Section, what's the important section? To show the detail of it. So now let me bring all to the whiteboard. I like to example show this one of the things that we teach in our class. How uh, this mode of teaching able so that students can understand when they put up the materials, they see the materials in clear perspective. It's not just the drawing. It's about the function, how people use it, and how does this lead to the inclusiveness. All right? Thank you. Uh, can you all see my, my, my whiteboard here, everybody? Can you all see my whiteboard? Yes, Professor. All right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, in each class, I will use uh, my clip or we will use webcam and whiteboard. So, I'm presenting now in my office. I'm not a believer to present in front of using just PowerPoint, no. I don't think that that, that bite. Okay, we have to be interactive students. So one of the ways to interactive, you write your own way. This is the fingerprint of your writing. This is you. Nobody in the world can imitate my handwriting. People know that this is my handwriting, right? So I think it's one way of, uh, uh, we call constructive uh, delivery to our students. Okay, let's start by having this here, Sungai Buntang, right? So at Sungai Buntang as well, if you look in the, in the plan, is there is water theater. It's a flat thing where people can do fishing. So therefore, let us uh, get from this. Therefore, when you do fishing, to look at water, we need amenities. So what are the amenities? So we need a fishing bag. Right? Right? Then along here, this is part of the riverine ecology here. What are the riverine ecosystem? The plants. Guys, the plant that grow here needs a lot of water. Yeah, the plant that grow here needs tons of water, lots of water. Therefore, we cannot bring plants who are in the hill, bring it here. We must see it. So now let us look at what are the plants. As you see from here, these are the plants from here, these are the rooms. Uh, in Bahasa Indonesia, rumput segitiga, ya. Yeah, yeah. 
This rumput segitiga is a place whereby the small fish of seluang, maybe of eel, habitat here. Uh, therefore, we need to bring the knowledge in the class of ecosystem, bring into the studio. Okay? Here. We don't introduce other plants that are not native. All plants over here we introduce native. I will explain why it's that important to, to at the end of this slide. Right? Okay. Thank you. So therefore, uh, we have that. Then, what about trees that are suitable to the along the river? We can have jambu eye. Jambu eye also, I think, in Indonesia, they call also jambu eye, right? Yeah, Pichitium aqua, right? For which that it fits along the river. And this plant, when it bears food and the food goes into the river, it becomes food for fish. It becomes food for lizards. It becomes a good food for fish. Then, therefore, and fish become food for the lizard. Okay? Therefore, it, it, it generates an ecosystem. Let me show you. There's a fish, right? Example of fish is the one. Right, to the one, and this to the one will become food for lizard. Right, and lizard will become food for snake, and snake will become food for eagle. This can happen. So, we mean, therefore, theory in the political class is brought into practice in the design. Okay, real, we, we want to put that in the party. Understand it real, not just theory. Okay, one. In also, there are also birds. This here, bird over here, some of the birds couldn't fly. Example, uh, Borong Triopadi. Yeah, Triopadi or what hand, here we call Borong Ayam Ayam. These are birds that walk on water lily because they have wet feet, feet, right? But it cannot fly. Therefore, where should it where should they have been it? Where should it where should they have the, the house? Where they play? Here in the neuron, in the robot figure city. This is the reason that we have to introduce the robot figure city. Therefore, students, when they tell, when we see the function directly, then they say that why I need to put in the figure city. Do not put heliconium. Do not put health as female, right? We should put in the figure city. Okay. Cyprus. This is the reason. Okay. After all, there are also farms that you said to along here. What are the farms? Perhaps we can introduce uh, Arika. Right? Yeah, you can also be an Arika. Okay. All right. So that comes to the east, the along the river. So this is where the river ecology ecosystem happens. Then let us move to this side. When we move to this side, we have big tree. Uh, here we can introduce the fruit tree because this is an orchard. It's a good farming, right? So we do fruit tree. What are the fruit trees? Rambutan. Mangue. Uh, Kande, Murtaku, all these are for one family, Garcinia. They are Garcinia. For which that many of these, especially Kande and Murtaku, are not known anymore, but they are made to plant. Therefore, as a landscape architect, you need to teach the public, bring it now into the city and teach the children especially that we have this native plant, which is not known anymore. Okay, so whose job is that? Landscape architect. You don't ask architect, urban planner, urban designer, know it, they're not about it. We are the one, the master of it. Therefore, our section should be way different from them. Our section at that. Okay? Right? 
Then when they have fruit, here comes the two part. The cupid. Why called cupid? It's a Latin name. So where is it right? Tupai. It's a millennium. So tell our students that. Then when our students mention this in their presentation to the client, the client will admit, oh, now I know why that they use the word stupid. Uh, because it's derived from Tupai. Okay. What does Tupai speak upon? Good. And how does this will relate to the cultural ecosystem? Here comes another activity. Cultural. When people go to the park, they do recreation, right? So cultural ecosystem is what is recreation. When a teacher brings some of the children to learn about ecology, to learn about biology in this park, they have to come early in the morning to see the children. Why? Plurals, when they start to search and to see, they come at early at 7 a.m. in the morning. So let the students understand that. Why? Because that is the habit of the squirrel. In biology, we call it cicada rhythm. So let the children, our children, go to the explicitly, if this becomes part of the natural learning area for them, learn the cicada rhythm. They will learn that by 10 a.m., you will never see, you will not see any more than the two parts. The two are gone. Why? They rank. They rank. They will come back late around Margaret time. Okay? When the sun is about to go down, they keep another, another round. Okay? So th this is where we bring the knowledge of this aspect here to bring, to create a path for which their people will stand upon it. Not just three. Okay. Let me give you one example here. <clears throat> I like to ask one student uh, in the urban farming here, here, the left urban farm, right? <clears throat> when you plant a uh, cucumber, a timon, when you plant Korea, Korea, it produces uh, it produce yellow flowers, right? I like to ask students on Ikira. You want to answer this? You produce yellow flower. What animal, what insect that apostle insect, ranga, young polenasi, bunga timon, bunga semangka, bunga puria, what are the insects? Come on. Uh, you understand? Uh, Edwin, uh, kamu boleh bahasa Indonesia kepada mereka tanya semula? Okay, uh, for our students, if you want to uh, ask him or uh, to respond what uh, he said, you can say it at, uh, in Indonesia, in Bahasa yeah, yeah. Indonesia. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So please, yeah, our student, you have to be brave. Do not hesitate to uh, say anything related with uh, what he said in his lecture. Okay, the students. Uh, students not excited. Okay, let let me give you more excitement. Uh, go back okay. to my slide. Uh, go back to my whiteboard. Okay, student. Okay, listen, student. You see one of these plants here, this plant can be pohon thing. Uh, do you know thing? Uh, ficus. Do you know it? Oh, ficus. No? Do you, do you all know it? If you say no, I'm going to show it now. Yes, no. Student, please. Come on, students. Uh, student, if I go to Itira, uh, perhaps in November and perhaps the end November of this year. This year, 
Okay. When the border opens, if you silence in my class, <laughs> I will bang you. Please, okay, come please on. Answer. Fernando, is it? Do, do you know what is a thing? If you don't know, I'm going to show you now. No, sir. Okay, thank you. This is the link. Uh, I, I, I got it just outside my office because I planted this 34 years ago. All right? But the interesting is this. What is it? Buah. Ah, buah, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah buah, yeah. Tetapi jawapan kamu salah. Kenapa? Ini bukan buah. Ini bunga. Ini ini bukan buah, ini bunga. Kamu mau percaya saya saya tunjuk kamu sekarang ya. I'm going to cut it. Saya guna ini pisau ini untuk potong ni half ya. Look at it. There you are. You see? You see this? Yes, Professor. Uh, inside this are the is the flower of tea. There are more than two thousand species of tea in the world. In Sumatra and Peninsula, we have more than hundred and fifty of tea. Michael, ara in English called ara ara. Yeah, this is the flower. Now comes to the knowledge. If you are a landscape architect. You build this path and you plant the team and you become a teacher who then to tell the marvelous of this food. It's not food, it's called pseudocalypse. <clears throat> okay, pseudocalypse, right? So, so this flower, it has to be pollinated by a what? Peningat. By a what? Not this peningat. Huh? What? So the what will go inside here. There is a small, but it needs the time for the fruit to ripen. I already got one here. This is green, young fruit. Belum matang ya. Ini sudah matang ya. Tengok. Tapi apa saya buka, saya buka tadi, saya belah dia, tapi tak ada insect lagi. Belum. The insect will go here, the mother insect, the wasp. Before it, she enter the aperture, uh, there's a little color here, ya. okay. Dia will enter, lose its wing. Maksudnya lepas ini, dia tidak boleh pulang. Itu hari terakhir untuk dia hidup. Then it lay eggs inside here. The egg has, Male, female, then they eat the flower inside. So they grow, and the male and female will mate. So and they have wings, but only the female able to exit from this. And then you go to the flower. Okay. Therefore, this relationship between the thing. And the what is an important relationship. Why? This is called intersecting relationship. Why? Okay, here is one. The what get a place and put a shelter for its baby to grow and become a dog. Right? And when the adults go to another flower, like this, then it pollinates it. So the fig tree gets a service from the wasp. So that is mutualism. Yeah, mutualism. So, so we teach students, we teach students through our project, bring the knowledge of ecosystem in the class into the project. So here. So if you are a landscape architect who knows this well, then people will believe in you. But we said this knowledge will not happen in urban planning. Neither the architect can get it. 
you that that's acceptable in this today. Not even the engineer. Okay? Right. You. Right? So this is what I, I like to ask you. Okay. So therefore, we have to bring this. Okay. Example, another fruit, another plant, or we can we can bring along the water is, is this fruit. This is this plant. What's this plant? The flower is this. Anybody? Muhammad, Novia, Alia, Kamsa, Petrus, Sergio Fridaus. What plant is this? And uh, Pino, sir. what is it? Yeah, so this plant will need a lot of water, therefore, it should be allowed here. This is the gingerbread, but you see, when you want to tell about plants to others, you as a landscape architect, you must tell its property. Therefore, one of its properties here, for which that when look, look guys, right, look. Right? And the water is tranquil. Yes. So therefore, when my student presents to the client, he says, wow, I understand now. The water is fragrant. That is why this plant. Instead of the gingiver, we call it aromatic. Yeah, aroma. Correct? Right? Yes, no? You, you all understand? Yes. Yes, uh, yes Professor. Yeah, you, you just need to say that only. Okay. But I'm going to show you in a this is a tree, a big tree. Where should you put it? Here. Maybe you put here. This is in, in Malay called Kapo. It's a big tree. But same as the, the that is also aromatic. But I need to crush it again. Wow. The smell is aromatic. Therefore, here the name is. Right? So these are the things that we need to tell. So this project about part can become This project can become a place where children can learn. Even the adults too. You got it? One more. I'd like to show you here. For which that this plant is a pet. It doesn't have fruit. This plant is a pet. It doesn't have fruit. So the interesting relationship, this is a parasite. What is it? It grows on other trees. This one grows on mycelia, on chempaka. Benalu, sir. What is it? Benalu, Professor. Say it again. Benalu. Benalu. Oh, you call it Benalu. Oh, thank, thank you. Uh, nice. We call it Dalu. The talic. Yeah. yeah. This one, it grows on trees. So it becomes a pack to the farmer. But the ecosystem, it controls the, the population of other trees. Are you seeing? Ecosystem is always funny sometimes. To the farmers, it hates it. But come to the ecosystem, this is a need. This is where you all tell people why you put place in this tree, allow it to go on other trees. Okay, guys, you understand? So let, let's go back to here. So, therefore, over here, we have many trees. So when you design it, make sure that there are trees with a nice spreading form. Others conical, like Pokok Meninjo, yeah? The Indonesia, the Sumatra, the Padang, they can buy the 
ini penting kan ya meninjau then we can put pokok aren arenga pinaka kerana one of the things that you can get gula aren di sini ya ya yeah, betul you understand that gula aren yes yeah. yes you see the reason is that the british the english and the dutch come to the malay malay archipelago in malaysia and malaysia one of the things that the world is to yes yeah, from this gula aren Aring is a Javanese word. Therefore, therefore, the Latin word, Latin word, Aringa Pinata. Aringa is from Javanese word, right? From this Aring, they get sugar. Because at the time, there's no sugar cane yet. There's no sugar beans. So they, they need to, to have this poverty. Bring it here into the past. Tell the young generation that our nation can call on this, on its economy. Right? Um, see, therefore, This section shows that all economy bring it. How does the past lead to the people participation? The harvesting. A lot of people teach them how to do it. Eventually, they can get the material knowledge. This is where we need to think differently from others. You understand, guys? Okay, yes, sir. Let's go back to the slide. <clears throat> mm. Okay, so right, the next slide. Uh, next, okay. So then, each student after they done their master plan in group, then they go in the project. So they take one parcel of it, right? So therefore, here is a parcel called entrance garden. So this student designed this entrance garden at a scale of one to two hundred. Just now, it's at a scale of one to seven hundred fifty. So therefore. When therefore students are able to gauge themselves understanding about scale, about size of the amenities, size of the trail and the walkway, size of the building, size of the tamar kitchen, and so forth. Next, and we go some other construction. Tell them what materials are fit to be for the public. The materials can be steel. The materials can be timber. The material of what of the soil can be gravel and so forth, right? Okay. All right. So let me conclude the lecture. That so we in this architecture we should follow some of the norms of the practice in the world. So therefore, in urban in urban park planning, we why not we bring these foundations of SDG level into our Design studio. Therefore, SDG level integrating into landscape architecture is an inspiration and supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. Moreover, undergrad design output urge local communities positive action to create sustainable farming and ensure a healthy living lifestyle. The, the last slide is the studio. Okay. This is my student, right? Uh, this are students. My student comprise of, uh, as I said, mostly are Malaysian, but four are Indonesian. Okay, and then we have to think of them, right? Some of multi ethnic, right? They are Muslim, they are Christian, they are Buddhist, right? They are multi ethnic. So far, I think, although we don't see it face to face, but Alhamdulillah, we're able to impart our knowledge to them and learn to them. Uh, therefore, I would like to just share with you know, the docent of Ukira that uh, during this COVID-19, because we cannot see our students, the students cannot even smell us, we cannot even smell them, uh, make sure that our delivery should be interactive. As you see my picture inside here, I usually use my whiteboard. I come to the office and deliver it. And I will show real examples. Yeah, I will show real food, not from the picture, not from what I get from Uncle Google. I show real food. Thank you, guys. Now we can open for two questions. Thank you, Uncle Google. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Professor Ismail, said for your uh, international lecture. So, um, 
before we going to the discussion session, uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Bambang Sulistiantara. Uh, actually, uh, he faced the technical problem. Okay, so uh, he's already with uh, us right now. Assalamualaikum, Pak Bambang. Yeah, yes. Assalamualaikum. Yeah, okay. Are you here? Pak Edu? Yeah, Pak Bambang, we can hear your uh, voice. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say thank you very much. Uh, good morning, of course. Assalamualaikum. Uh, greeting uh, of good head for us. Uh, Amin. Uh, the Honorable uh, Head of uh, Department of GTIK, Dr. Rahayu, still here. Thank you very much uh, for your presence here. Uh, of course, the dear Professor Dr. Ismail bin Said. This is uh, the professor from the University of Technology Malaysia, from the Department of uh, Landscape Architecture also, uh, and the Faculty of uh, Built Environment and Surveying. This is this too. Okay, and to whom I'm proud uh, of my colleagues. Uh, lecturer and student from the landscape architecture uh, of the study program at ITERA. Uh, welcome, of course, welcome to this uh, event this morning, which is uh, this uh, event is uh, eagerly awaited for a long time um, by all of us. Then, uh, yeah, we call uh, this is the Stadium General which uh, has uh, delivered by the professor Ismail bin Said. Uh, as the head of study program, I'm very proud, very pleased and uh, grateful to professor Ismail, who has spent his time in uh, his busy life. As all we know, uh, he is a professor from U the University of uh, Technology Malaysia, who has a uh, very broad uh, experiences. Uh, I myself uh, known Professor Ismail since uh, his present at the uh, Department of uh, Landscape Architecture at IBB. I think this is uh, this was uh, 2008 or 2009. 2008. 2008 or nine, yeah. And besides, uh, I also met uh, Professor Ismail at uh, the event of ACLA, ACLA event and Seoul in 2016. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah, once again, Professor Ismail has uh, having a very, very broad uh, experiences. That's why it is very important for all of us, including uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> the landscape architecture student of ITERA to learn from professor. Yeah. Therefore, it is very appropriate for Professor Ismail to fill up the studium general and to add insight, insight into the subject of the design studio course of, of ITERA. Uh, yeah. uh, we would like uh, to inform uh, to professor that the student who are participating in this uh, event are students of the first batch and are currently in the fourth semester. Of course, our knowledge and experience is uh, very still limited. It is true that the ITERA landscape architecture study program is very young, is still young, very young. We still uh, two years old, <laughs> it's very, 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 very young. However, we have a great passion for learning a lot and for developing our staff. The presence of Professor Ismail on this occasion is very important uh, as a very strong motivation for us, of course, uh, for us to always grow and develop, inshallah. I would not uh, like to do uh, to be a long time in giving uh, my speech in this opportunity on this screen. 
uh, we can see in the present of a student from other study program also and from the professional thanks for them for their participation in this stadium general also my deep gratitude to the for the collegial hard work of a lecturer from the landscape architecture study program especially for mr edwin eko franjaya who had prepared the technical uh, technically in uh, for this event and thank you also uh, to the head of the department dr hayu who always uh, support activities in our study program once again uh, welcome uh, to professor ismail bin saleh said uh, and for the student uh, welcome to follow and learn deepen deepen uh, learning from uh, professor ismail saleh thank you very much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and thank you uh, Pak Bambang for your speech. So uh, we are going to move to the discussion session and uh, for this session uh, maybe I would like to separate it uh, around two sessions maybe for the first uh, especially for the students in landscape architecture and related study program and for the second session is uh, for the professional for the lecturer and the others. So for the first session, I would like to invite our students here to ask him uh, related to what uh, he said uh, in his lecture. Okay. Is there any question from the students? Okay, actually uh, we have a question, Professor Ismail in our chat column. Uh, for the first, uh, it's come from Tarik Biranul Natadipura. Actually, he is our first year student in landscape architecture, ITERA. So he asked about, uh, I want to ask, how will this affect to the sustainable cities and human settlements? Thank you. Okay, actually, maybe this is uh, related with uh, your explanation about the trace about uh, the variety of the trees, the morphological of the trees, the character of the trees. So uh, how that affect or directly affect the sustainable cities and human settlement? Okay, thank you. So, uh, in the perspective of landscape architecture, uh, we look at two things, ecological health and human health. All right. Okay, I'm going to write here. <coughs> All right, on the ecological health, once we introduce native species, uh, more than 70% of uh, plant species in nation cities are not, not, not non-native. I think the same in Indonesia because I traveled in Indonesia for the past 22 years. I know it well. Right? We have brought other, other species from other places. No, we should bring our own species, right? Once this is healthy, you have cupids, you have bees and so forth they will lead to the production of fruits and to the pollinations of the vegetables, the korea, the semangka, and so forth, right? They will lead to the economy of people, at least, right? We are not talking about supply tons of fruits, right? Supply some of the fruits, okay? So therefore, we as an architect, we must know about this ecological health. That goes to one of the examples here. Uh, when we have this flower, kuchumbrung, kuchumbrung, yeah, for which that we plant it near water because it is zingiberacin, right? But when it has this quality, therefore we know where to plant it. And we know that what's the benefit of this. In Malaysia, it is a spice for which that we use for masa ikan pedas. In Pekan Baru, ikan padir, right? So therefore, this is part of it. Therefore, people, when they cultivate it, they don't have to go to the market to find it. They can find it in the farm. And when they are surplus, they share with their neighbors. When sharing their with neighbors, they go for social connectivity. Social connectivity which leads to social, social cohesion. This is where the human health comes in. Okay. That is why when you talk about sustainable, sustainable is a very big and gray and fuzzy definition. Define it in your own terms. 
Okay, that's how I, I see it. Okay, hold on. But when you look ecology wise, one of the concerns of many ecologists is about the decline of bees. Declining of bees. Some studies say that 70% of the bees population is already gone. But bees is one of the most important pollinators. Okay. Therefore, when we have yellow flowers, pink flowers, for which they attract bees and it blooms early in the morning, before you all wake up, okay, then the bees collect it and bring to the hive. When it brings to the hive, then it will turn into honey. But the process actually, if you were to teach the children, that's more complicated than this. I don't want to elaborate further, but we need to concern about bees. Should we concern it in, in, in the wood? Yes, we can do it. Not only because bees do not pollinate flowers in the, in the, in the forest. Some, yeah, but most of the species with small bees, not the composite bees with huge bees, right? They, they, they pollinate in, in here. Can we turn the urban park become a place where bees, birds, and butterfly able to grow well at equilibrium? Yes. That is a research by one of my colleagues who did research this in the of Copenhagen, found that parks, pocket parks in Malaysia provide enough supply of flowers to bees and bees and butterfly, bees and butterfly feeds upon birds such as magpie robins. Therefore, in turn, it becomes a, a complex, diverse ecosystem in the, in, in, in the urban park, not in the forest, not in the rural area. Therefore, we can contribute that, but we must get the knowledge. We must do the research. That is why I do recommend all docent from ITERA, you need to go for your PhD. Because the depth of knowledge into that. Because science, guys, is not delivery of facts. Science is study of process of how things happen around us. This is what happens. Okay? The other is, isn't bertanya Pak, bagaimana caranya dalam bidang arsitektur lanskap kontribusi untuk mengatasi degrasi dataran? Ya? Well, the, the, this one is a way, uh, is off from my lecture. I don't want to go to, to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will come to you all later on. Once it's permitted, I will come to your place, inshallah, with my team. I don't, I will, won't come alone with my team. Uh, the, the other name is Muhammad Dafa. I want to ask how will this project affect to you? Oh, <laughs> this is off too. Uh, but uh, landform, soil is the substance for plants to grow. When the soil is rich, then you get good plants. Yeah. Okay, okay. moving guys. Okay, thank you, Professor Ismail. Uh, okay, students, is there any question from uh, all of you here? Yeah, actually, uh, it's very interesting lecture from him because, as you know, that it's closely related with uh, what we did, what we uh, doing right now in our uh, design studio in your project. So. I hope that uh, there are a lot of questions from you to ask him. Okay, so uh, Professor Ismail, there is uh, another question here from Muhammad Alim Al Kowi. Actually, uh, he is also our first year student. Beforehand, thank you for your amazing lecture. I want to ask is, is that fruit tree really work? I mean, even there even there are controlling species and structure ecosystem that may but fruit trees are have many pests rather than usual tree or there is another mechanism to eliminate that factor okay i like to ask this question to al amin what is the pest of a uh, pokok mangis mangis has no pest what is the pest of a uh, pokok uh, rambutan has no pest but if you ask you plant nantar and sempedak yes Therefore, you need to find ways to how to wrap the fruit so that uh, the 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 uh, the wax will not lay the eggs into the fruits of the nanker and the product. As easy as that. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So, is there any question from uh, our students, or maybe uh, the student from City and Regional Planning, 
or architecture maybe is there anyone or from our youtube is there any question from the youtube our youtube okay or from the professional here uh, actually professor ismail we also invite uh, our uh, indonesian Socia uh, society of landscape architecture in lampung chapter but i don't know uh, is there anyone from Isla here? Okay, for the participant, all the participant here, is there any question for Professor Ismail? Okay, uh, there is one question again, for Ismail from Alda Mauliani. Prof, I want to ask how to manage existing standing water on the site so that it can be utilized as the potential of the site. Uh, Thank you. Any water, I presume, retention pond, right? Yeah. Uh, in Malaysia, we also have many retention ponds. So go and look at uh, the quality of water. Then if it's uh, good enough to where fish can breathe, therefore you can add plants, uh, water plants, or plants that live up at the edge of water, for which that their fries, their larvae, can able to uh, uh, live and then multiply healthily, health, healthily in the environment of that standing water. But it should have a big coverage uh, because uh, the ratio between the area and the depth. So if it's too shallow, then the water is not suitable for many fish. Uh, the fish that live in the littoral, for which that where lights can still can uh, reach to the bottom of the, of the lake or, or the pond, the littoral, where many of the plant species grow there. So uh, many of the animals grow there, especially zooplankton, right? And also, of course, phytoplankton. Okay. So therefore, you need to study about a bit on that uh, the cross section of uh, pond and lake. Go ahead, all right? I have, because uh, this uh, you all love to ask about technical. <laughs> Never mind. This one uh, at times uh, we need to. I need to sit in front of you to draw a section, so that you can understand it more better. Hopefully, uh, we can defeat uh, part COVID ni. Nanti saya akan ketemu kamu semua di Lampung, ya. Okay, thank you, Professor Ismail, for your uh, explanation, for your answers. So, uh, there is another question from the chat column in Indonesia, actually. Uh, Petrus from Petrus Karme Bago. Actually, uh, he is our first year student. Uh, he asked about the Zingiber Aromaticum and Driobalanops Aromatica in, uh, along the river in Sri Buntan. Uh, is it safety for all the users there, especially for uh, the human and other uh, yeah, organism uh, in there? Oh, oh, oh yes, uh, this one is it, best flowers. Therefore, the flowers become a food for ant, a food for ants and lizards. In fact, yeah, where the ants will be eaten by the lizards. Yeah. So part of the ecology. And of course, uh, Dryobalanum aromaticum is a big tree. Uh, this is uh, in which that uh, it will provide shade to other trees. Yeah. Uh, in Malaysia, along the roadside, people begin to plant it. Uh, actually, it's a huge tree for which to put it into timber after about let's say, eight years, right? Uh, but but you need big space, okay? Right. Uh, the reason I bring out these plants is that our students do not know about uh, our native plant species. So you ask them what is arenga pinata, areng, pokok areng, pokok areng, tak tahu mereka tu. I think we have to do it. If not, we have we, our material, our material is all what happening, what is available in the sea. No, it shouldn't be that. You, you cannot, you cannot stretch far with that, right? So we need to do, we need to change it. I've been teaching for the past 36, I know the, the evolution of this plant material. Bring back our native species. <clears throat> Thank okay. You. Thank you, Prof. Ismail. So uh, there is another question too from yeah, Agus Satya. The plan of that uh, is uh, it is uh, it needs some shade. Uh, it needs some shade. It's in Sumatra and Peninsula Malaysia, we actually before the ice age seventy five thousand years ago, we are one land. 
Therefore, we have a lot of fighters, at least 150 species of fighters. And most fighters grow very well in this region, in the Sunda area, right? So therefore, you can plant it uh, in the in the past. Uh, and uh, some of it is edible. Uh, right away, you, you don't have to boil it. Uh, we call here, we call po pohon aranasi. The reason that we call aranasi because we eat as ulam. You know, you understand about ulam? Relation, ulam. Why we eat nasi? Yes. It's true. I bet it grows along the river edge. Uh, that is why that points me that you all must know, go and look and learn about this vocabulary. Go and go to the village, ask the people about the native plants. Ask them in their language. Then all go and check Google what is the scientific name. Go and search for yourself. Do not only depend from the books. Go and search for yourself. All right. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Prof. Ismail, for your answer. So, uh, is there any question from the students? or from a professional here joining with us with our international lecture today. Saya Pak izin bertanya. Okay, please Fernando. Boleh pakai bahasa Indonesia aja Pak ya? Okay, yeah, yeah. it's okay. Uh, bagaimana uh, pendapat Bapak mengenai anomali yang di Indonesia gitu Pak? Kayak misalkan Bapak ngebuat desain. Professor you make a design but in Indonesia itu kayak banyak user yang datang sehingga merusak apa yang Bapak rencanakan misalkan kayak uh, di lecture Bapak kan menjelaskan tentang ecological health tentang human health gitu sedangkan di Indonesia kan kayak anomalinya jelek gitu kayak orang datang ke taman rame-rame camping segala macam terus pada akhirnya merusak seperti itu Pak bagaimana menurut Bapak thank you uh, Edwin uh, can you summarize it? I, I couldn't understand the, the, the question Okay, actually uh, he asked about the like vandalism. So if oh. uh, yeah, <laughs> vandalism to uh... Uh, yes, uh, uh, Malaysia have already gone through that phase. So now the vandalism is getting less. It's, it's not vanished at all. The vandalism in the 70s, 80s, I find is vandalism is rampant. Uh, banyak. Uh, however, as we become, we able to educate. The people that why it's necessary, where whereby when we do a, a community farm, where people do not steal the fruit, yeah, it happens some some somehow. But the when people get educated and to, to value the property of others, uh, that vandalism is get down. So this is uh, quite a, we call a sociality problem, right? So therefore, it's beyond uh, our design practice. If you keep on. Uh, look uh, concerned about it, I don't think you can move uh, uh, with, into your design, right? So something we cannot, some of them we cannot handle it in design. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Professor Ismail. So is there any question from the students? Uh, actually, you can uh, ask him directly, right? You can ask him directly or you can write your question on the chat column so I can read it to him. Okay, uh, I think that there is another question, Professor, in our chat column from Hiskia Presley. Uh, he asked about- Yeah, uh, when, it, when you fly, right? Uh, yeah. that's, that's good. That is why, uh, this is one thing I forgotten just now. We does also uh, uh, get uh, the knowledge from the engineer or we said of that Sungai Buntan, we have a retention pond. We enlarge the size of that pond so that it will retain when there's heavy, heavy rain. Apabila hujan deras, semacam semacam hujan deras, maka kita retention pond akan mengambil kapasiti hujan volume yang ada itu. Mungkin dan dia akan dapat tidak, jadi air itu tidak melimpah ya. Yang menjadi banjir ya, begitu. There is a good question there for when talk about sungai in Malaysia, uh, the sungai is actually is the property under the property of the Department of Irrigation. And the Department of Irrigation is an engineering work. But then we communicate with them instead of, uh, can we have the, the trees along the bank so that plants can grow and animals can feed upon the plants? They begin to think that way now, right? 
Okay, thank you, Prof. Ismail. So, uh, again, is there any question from students or from the professional here? <coughs> okay, there is no question anymore. Okay, I think it's enough, maybe, Professor no. Ismail. Thank so, uh, thank you for your uh, international lecture today. And uh, before we close our uh, lecture today, I would like to invite you again to give a closing statement or closing remarks to us. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> thank you, Pa Edwin, and thank you, uh, Ibu Dr. Rahayu, for inviting me. Actually, I have been uh, giving this lecture to Indonesian University since 2008. Uh, we begin, I, we, my team began with Universitas Muhammadiyah Surakarta. Uh, yesterday, my team asked me, uh, when can we go to Lampung? So they are excited. Uh, I will bring team from the urban design team, comprised of architecture, urban planner, and architecture, architecture, right? docents, from at least four universities in Malaysia. We like to go and contribute to workshop, four days workshop at your place. Hopefully, uh, the COVID is gone, so that, therefore we can get vaccine and we can travel to Lampung. So that's the wish of my team. So we hope that uh, that wish uh, be materialized when this lockdown is over. So I hope every student uh, stay put into your region, your, your curiosity in looking at things, right? Uh, one thing that I like to point to students, uh, you all must ask questions. Uh, let me tell you one story here. <clears throat> there is a scientist, a physicist, for which that he won Nobel Prize in Physics. He is Professor Izodo Izi Rabai, a Jew, who migrated from Hungary and he got Nobel Prize in Physics in 1944. 1944. He came from a poor family, whereby his mother is illiterate, do not know to read. But his mother know the value of education. So when he came back from school, he asked Easy, Easy, have you asked the right question to your docent, your professor? Easy, have you asked the right question? He does, she does not ask what grade you have, what have done, have you done your homework? Do you get A's in, in this subject? She doesn't do that. That turns easy to become a renowned scientist and won Nobel Prize. Is it better? Yes. In, in, in ASEAN, not a single person get Nobel Prize yet. In ASEAN. In Japan, yes, there are a few. In Asia, no. Don't talk. Uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, no, zero. Because we do not like to ask questions. Those who ask questions, even though your English is weak, it's okay. But you dare to ask. That is a good number one attitude. We need that. Okay, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor, for your advice and your closing statement for today's lecture. So before we close uh, our lecture or our program today, I would like to inform uh, all of you here, our participants here, uh, about our next lecture. So this is not the first and not the last lecture, international lecture. Actually in the next week and in the next couple of weeks, uh, we will have another international lecture too, uh, related with landscape ar architecture, but with different uh, speaker. Actually uh, the speakers uh, are uh, Professor Ismail Kalejis, so I hope that uh, the participant here can join with us again in the next uh, international lecture. So that is my last statement. Thank you from me and on behalf of uh, Landscape Architecture Study Program and then the Faculty of uh, Regional and in, uh, Infrastructure Technology, uh, I would like to say thank you so much for Professor Ismail. Okay, and thank you uh, for Bu Ayu. Thank you for Pak Bambang and all the participants uh, that joined our international, uh, international lecture today. So thanks from me and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks, salam. Oh.
Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, Bye. Professor. Bye. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Prof. Ismail. Thank you, Bu. Thank you, thank you Professor. Yeah, thank you, Prof. Ismail. Thank you, Pak Edo. Yeah, um, Bu Ayu, sesuai dengan yang disampaikan Prof. Ismail tadi, uh, beliau di akhir tahun ini rencananya mau datang. Mau datang, jadi mungkin kita bisa kerjasama tidak hanya landscape, tapi uh, PWK, arsitektur juga mungkin sama. Jadi uh, kita ada workshop bersama gitu ya, Bu, ya, mungkin ya. Oke, okay. terima kasih Bu Ayu, terima kasih Pak Membang, dan terima kasih rekan-rekan uh, mahasiswa semuanya. Tadi dikasih nasihat ya, untuk uh, bisa lebih berani, lebih bisa berpendapat gitu ya. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Uh, saya tutup lagi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Pak Edu ada gangguan di awalnya. Oh iya Pak Bambang, <laughs> mohon maaf juga. Ganti-ganti laptop sebelah sebelahan. Oh iya, iya. Ya, mohon maaf Pak Bambang. Ini, ini Pak Bambang. Oh sambil rapi Bu Ayu ya, ya mohon maaf ya, Bu Ayu. Sambil rabuan sekarang. Terima ya. kasih. Mohon terima maaf, kasih. Ya. ya terima kasih Pak Bambang. Ya terima kasih Bu Ayu. Oke, terima kasih teman-teman semuanya ya, mahasiswa sekalian. Uh, Insya Allah uh, minggu depan ada lagi ya. Minggu depan ada lagi, bahkan dua minggunya lagi. Hatrik ada ini ya, ada tiga kali pertemuan, tapi dengan rekan-rekan atau koleganya Prof uh, Ismail ya. Jadi saya harapkan teman-teman bisa join lagi. Bu Ayu, Pak Bung juga mohon izin untuk uh, bisa memberikan uh, sambutan nantinya juga ya. Terima kasih Bu Ayu, terima kasih Pak Bambang. Oke. Okay. Terima kasih Pak Edu. Ya, sama-sama.